is a miracle? A miracle is a correction. It does not create nor really change at all. It merely looks on devastation and reminds the mind that what it sees is false. Rebirth is merely the dawning on your mind of what is already in it. God placed it there himself, and so it is true forever. When a mind has only light, it knows only light. Its own radiance shines all around it and extends out into the darkness of other minds transforming them into majesty. When you are sad, know this need not be. Depression comes from a sense of being deprived of something you want and do not have. Remember that you are deprived of nothing except by your own decisions, and then decide otherwise. The journey to God is merely the reawakening of the knowledge of where you are always and what you are forever. It is a journey without distance to a goal that has never changed. You are altogether irreplaceable in the mind of God. No one else can fill your part of it. And while you leave your part of it empty, your eternal place merely waits for your return. Mind reaches to itself. It does not go out. Within itself it has no limits, and there is nothing outside it. It encompasses you entirely, you within it, and it within you. There is nothing else, anywhere or ever. The body is outside you, but it seems to surround you, shutting you off from others and keeping you apart from them. The mind that serves the Holy Spirit is unlimited forever, in all ways, beyond the laws of time and space, unbound by any preconceptions, and with strength and power to do whatever it is asked. Attack thoughts cannot enter such a mind because it has been given to the source of love. And fear can never enter in a mind that has attached itself to loving. It rests in God. And who can be afraid who lives in innocence and only loves? Seek not outside yourself, for it will fail, and you will weep each time an idol falls. Heaven cannot be found where it is not, and there can be not peace excepting there. Each idol that you worship when God calls will never answer in his place. There is no other answer you can substitute and find the happiness his answer brings. Seek not outside yourself, for all your pain comes simply from a futile search for what you want, insisting where it must be found. What if it is not there? Do you prefer that you be right or happy? Be you glad that you are told where happiness abides and seek no longer elsewhere. It is given you to know the truth and not to seek for it outside yourself. What you see reflects your thinking and your thinking but reflects your choice of what you want to see. Seek not outside yourself. The search implies you are not whole within and fear to look upon your devastation. There is nothing outside you. 
That is what you must ultimately learn. See the love of God in you, and you will see it everywhere, because it is everywhere. It is your thoughts alone that cause you pain. Nothing external to your mind can hurt or injure you in any way. There is no cause beyond yourself that can reach down and bring oppression. No one but yourself affects you. There is nothing in the world that has the power to make you ill or sad or weak or frail. But it is you who have the power to dominate all things you see by merely recognizing what you are. Deep within you is everything that is perfect, ready to radiate through you and out into the world. It will cure all sorrow and pain and fear and loss because it will heal the mind that thought these things were real and suffered out of its allegiance to them. Spirit's voice is as loud as your willingness to listen. It cannot be louder without violating your freedom of choice, which the Holy Spirit seeks to restore, never to undermine. As you perceive the holy companions who travel with you, you will realize that there is no journey, but only an awakening. The peace of God is my one goal, the aim of all my living here, the end I seek, my purpose and my function and my life. Love will enter immediately into any mind that truly wants it, but it must want it truly. The memory of God can dawn in a mind that chooses to remember and has relinquished the insane desire to control reality. You who cannot even control yourself should hardly aspire to control the universe. The recognition of God is the recognition of yourself. There is no separation of God and His creation. Those who seek the light are merely covering their eyes. The light is in them now. Enlightenment is but a recognition, not a change at all. The memory of God comes to the quiet mind. It cannot come where there is conflict, for a mind at war against itself remembers not eternal. You are free to choose a goal that lies beyond the world and every worldly thought. The world cannot dictate the goal for which you search, unless you give it power to do so. What would you see? The choice is given you. But learn and do not let your mind forget this law of seeing. You will look upon that which you feel within. If hatred finds a place within your heart, you will perceive a fearful world. If you feel the love of God within you, you will look out on a world of mercy and full of love.
is no more contradictory concept than that of idle thoughts. What gives rise to the perception of a whole world can hardly be called idle. Every thought you have contributes to truth or to illusion. Either it extends the truth or it multiplies illusion. What is temptation but a wish to make illusions real? Truth does not fight against illusions, nor do illusions fight against the truth. Illusions battle only with themselves. Without illusions there could be no fear, no doubt, and no attack. When truth has come, all pain is over. Love waits on welcome. And the real world is but your welcome of what always was. To be born again is to let the past go and look without condemnation upon the present. Remember that no one is where he is by accident, and chance plays no part in God's plan. Your passage through time and space is not at random. You cannot be but in the right place at the right time. Now is the closest approximation of eternity that the world offers. Judgment and condemnation are behind you, and unless you bring them with you, you will see that you are free of them. Look lovingly upon the present, for it holds the only things that are forever true. All healing lies within it. When you have learned to look on everyone with no reference at all to the past, either his or yours, you will be able to learn from what you see. For the past can cast no shadow to darken the present unless you are afraid of the light. And only if you are would you choose to bring darkness with you and by holding it in your mind, see it as a dark cloud shrouding your brothers and concealing their reality from your sight. Fear is not of the present, but only of the past and future, which do not exist. There is no fear in the present, when each instant stands clear and separated from the past. Each instant is a clean, untarnished birth. What time but now can truth be recognized? The present is the only time there is. And so today, this instant, now, we come to look upon what is forever there. The past is gone, the future but imagined. These concerns are but defenses, nothing more. Freedom is impossible as long as you perceive your body as yourself. The body is a limit. Who would seek for freedom in a body looks for it where it cannot be found. The mind can be made free when it no longer sees itself as in a body, firmly tied to it and sheltered by its presence. It is still up to you to choose to join with truth or with illusion. But remember that to choose one is to let the other go. Which one you choose you will endow with beauty and reality. 
The choice depends on which you value more. The veil of ugliness or the spark of beauty. The world of guilt and fear or the real world. Illusion or truth. Slavery or freedom. Fear condemns and love forgives. Forgiveness thus undoes what fear has produced, returning the mind to the awareness of God. For this reason, forgiveness can truly be called salvation. It is the means by which illusions disappear. When you feel the need arise to be defensive about anything, you have identified yourself with an illusion. Patience is natural to those who trust. No outcome already seen or yet to come can cause them fear. God dwells within, and your completion lies in Him. No idol takes His place. Look not to idols. Do not seek outside yourself. We practice but an ancient truth we knew before illusions seem to claim the world. And we remind the world that it is free of all illusions every time we say, God is but love, and therefore so am I. I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience. And I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. Whenever you are not wholly joyous, it is because you have reacted with a lack of love to one of God's creations. There are many answers you have received but have not yet heard. I assure you that they are waiting for you. When you meet anyone, remember it is a holy encounter. As you see him, you will see yourself. As you treat him, you will treat yourself. As you think of him, you will think of yourself. Never forget this. For in him, you will find yourself or lose yourself. I am alone in nothing. Everything I think, or say, or do, teaches all the universe. As you teach, so will you learn. If that is true, and it is true indeed, do not forget that what you teach is teaching you. Teach no one that he is what you would not want to be. Your brother is the mirror in which you see the image of yourself as long as the perception lasts.
Everything you teach, you are learning. Teach only love. And learn that love is yours, and you are love. Teach only love, for that is what you are. It is not up to you to change your brother, but merely to accept him as he is. When you want only love, you will see nothing else. Having rests on giving and not on getting. Never forget you give but to yourself. Who understands what giving means must laugh at the idea of sacrifice. I bless the world because I bless myself. No one can give unless he has. In fact, giving is proof of having. No one can doubt that you must first possess what you would give. It is the world that asserts that having had and given, you have lost what you possessed. The truth maintains that giving will increase what you possess. Let us be still an instant and forget all things we ever learned, all thought we had, and every preconception that we hold of what things mean and what their purpose is. Let us remember not our own ideas of what the world is for. We do not know. Let every image held of every one be loosened from our minds and swept away. Be innocent of judgment, unaware of any thoughts of evil or of good that ever crossed your mind of anyone. Now do you know him not, but you are free to learn of him and learn of him anew. unless you hold it more dear than truth. You will identify with what you think will make you safe. Whatever it may be, you will believe that it is one with you. Your safety lies in truth and not in lies. Love is your safety. Fear does not exist. Identify with love and you are safe. Identify with love and you are home. 
identify with love and find your true self. Attempting the mastery of fear is useless. In fact, it asserts the power of fear by the very assumption that it need be mastered. The true resolution rests entirely on mastery through love. Miracles are merely the transformation of denial into truth. If to love oneself is to heal oneself, those who are sick do not love themselves. Therefore, they are asking for the love that would heal them. Every loving thought is true. Everything else is an appeal for healing and help, regardless of the form it takes. Can anyone be justified in responding with anger to a brother's plea for help? No response can be appropriate except the willingness to love him. For this and only this is what he's asking for. Learn this and learn it well. You never hate your brother for his sins, but only for your own. When a situation has been dedicated wholly to truth, peace is inevitable. I am in need of nothing but the truth. I see that I need only truth. In that, all needs are satisfied, all cravings end, all hopes are finally fulfilled, and dreams are gone. Now I have everything that I could need. Now I have everything that I could want. And now at last, I find myself at peace. Do not try to look beyond yourself for truth, for truth can only be within you. Let no dark cloud out of your past obscure him from you, for truth lies only in the present, and you will find it here if you seek it here. You have looked for it where it is not, and therefore have not found it. Learn then to seek it where it is and it will dawn on eyes that see. Your past was made in anger, and if you use it to attack the present, you will not see the freedom that the present holds. Truth is restored to you through your desire, as it was lost to you through your desire for something else. Open the holy place that you closed off by valuing the something else, and what was never lost will quietly return. It has been saved for you. There is no question but one you should ever ask of yourself. Do I want to know my Father's will for me? He will not hide it. When I said, I am with you always, I meant it literally. I am not absent to anyone in any situation. Because I am always with you, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Peace is the state where love abides and seeks to share itself. Conflict and peace are opposites. Where one abides, the other cannot be. 
Where one goes, the other disappears. Peace is impossible to those who look on war. Peace is inevitable to those who offer peace. The only way to have peace is to teach peace. By teaching peace, you must learn it yourself because you cannot teach what you have not learned. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all of the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. It is not necessary to seek for what is true, but it is necessary to see what is false. Every illusion is one of fear, whatever form it takes. And the attempt to escape from one illusion into another must fail. If you seek love outside yourself, you can be certain that there is a darkness within. Your peace will never come from the illusion of love, but only from its reality. If you achieve the faintest glimmering of what love means today, you have advanced in distance without measure and in time beyond the count of years to your release. Exempt no one from your love or you will be hiding a dark place in your mind where the Holy Spirit is not welcome. And thus, you will exempt yourself from his healing power. For by not offering total love, you will not be healed completely. Love cannot enter where there is one spot of fear to mar its welcome. There is a place in you where there is perfect peace. There is a place in you where nothing is impossible. There is a place in you where the strength of God abides. Nothing more than an attempt to make someone else feel guilty. Sickness is anger taken out upon the body. Though the ego takes many forms, it is always the same idea. What is not love is always fear and nothing else. The awareness that there is nothing to fear shows that somewhere in your mind, though not necessarily in a place you recognize as yet, you have remembered God and let his strength take the place of your weakness. The instant you are willing to do this, there is indeed nothing to fear. Beware of the temptation to perceive yourself unfairly treated. All things work together for good. There are no exceptions, except in the ego's judgment. If you knew who walks beside you on the way that you have chosen, fear would be impossible. If you cannot hear the voice of God, it is because you do not choose to listen. That you do listen to the voice of your ego is demonstrated by your attitudes, your feelings, and your behavior.
The ego is quite literally a fearful thought. Within this kingdom, the ego rules, and cruelly. And to defend this fragment of your mind that is such a tiny part of it, that could you but appreciate the whole, you would see instantly that it is like the smallest sunbeam to the sun, or like the faintest ripple on the surface of the ocean. In its amazing arrogance, this tiny sunbeam has decided it is the sun. This almost imperceptible ripple hails itself as the ocean. Think how alone and frightened is this little thought, this infinitesimal illusion, holding itself apart against the universe. To hold a grievance is to let the ego rule your mind. No one alone can judge the ego truly. Yet when two or more join together in searching for truth, the ego can no longer defend its lack of content. The distractions of ego may seem to interfere with your learning, but the ego has no power to distract you unless you give it the power to do so. Love and guilt cannot coexist. To accept one is to deny the other. When you feel guilty, your ego is in command. Because only the ego can experience guilt. The end of guilt will never come as long as you believe there is a reason for it. For you must learn that guilt is always totally insane and has no reason. The guiltless mind cannot suffer. Being sane, the mind heals the body because it has been healed. The sane mind cannot conceive of illness because it cannot conceive of harming anyone or anything. You are not really capable of being tired, but you are very capable of wearying yourself. The strain of constant judgment is virtually intolerable and exhausting. If you attack the error in another, you will hurt yourself. You cannot know your brother when you attack him. It is certain you fear what you attack. It is impossible to overestimate your brother's value. Who transcends the body has transcended limitation. The way to God is through forgiveness. There is no other way. If attack is not relinquished entirely, it is not relinquished at all. When any situation arises which tempts you to become disturbed, say, there is another way of looking at this. Healing is release from the fear of waking. The decision to wake is the reflection of the will to love, since all healing involves replacing fear with love. Ask not to be forgiven. 
for this has already been accomplished. Ask, rather, to learn how to forgive. Do you want peace? Forgiveness offers it. Do you want happiness? A quiet mind? A certainty of purpose? And a sense of worth and beauty that transcends the world? Do you want care and safety? And the warmth of sure protection always? Do you want a quietness that cannot be disturbed? A gentleness that never can be hurt. A deep, abiding comfort and a rest so perfect it can never be upset. All this forgiveness offers you. Forgive the past and let it go, for it is gone. God does not forgive because he has never condemned. And there must be condemnation before forgiveness is necessary. Forgiveness is the great need of this world, but that is because it is a world of illusions. Those who forgive are thus releasing themselves from illusions, while those who withhold forgiveness are binding themselves to them. Forgiveness is the key to happiness. Here is the answer to your search for peace. Here is the key to meaning in a world that seems to make no sense. Here is the way to safety in dangers that appear to threaten you at every turn and bring uncertainty to all your hope of ever finding quietness and peace. In forgiveness are all questions answered. In forgiveness, the end of all uncertainty ensured at last. Every situation properly perceived becomes an opportunity to heal. Healing is the effect of minds that join, as sickness comes from minds that separate. Miracles occur naturally as expressions of love. The real miracle is the loving that inspires them. In this sense, everything that comes from loving is a miracle. The holiest of all the spots on earth is where an ancient hatred has become a present love. Simply do this, be still, lay aside all thoughts of what you are and what God is, all concepts you have learned about the world, all images you hold about yourself.
Empty your mind of everything it thinks is either true or false, or good or bad. Of every thought it judges worthy, and all the ideas of which it is ashamed. Hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought the past has taught, one belief you ever learned before from anything. Forget this world. Forget this course. And come with wholly empty hands unto your God.